preview. Kia ora, talofa, ni hao, and namaste. You are here with Ramil for a program called Te Wa Fanu. Te Wa Fanu is a gambling harm awareness program and it, um, this program runs every fortnightly. So you are here with Ramil for a Te Wa Fanu. I am public health worker from Salvation Army Oasis. We are based in 41 Perry Street, Masterton. So if you have any gambling problem, please do not hesitate to contact us. And we are here to support you for your gambling problem. And we have free counseling service, which is based in Masterton as well as. So you are here with the Romil for Tewa Fanu. This program runs every fortnightly and this program's repeated program will be every friday so you are here with ramil for a program called tewa fanu and tewa fanu uh, is a program run by salvation army oasis and uh, we are here as i said you every fortnightly so if, as I'm always repeating, do not hesitate to contact us. And in every program, I used to give you our contact details. So today we have a special guest, uh, uh, Kate, uh, who is our counselors, uh, case workers for Salvation Army, and as well as uh, as well as she is. Um, is a brilliant art worker she did a art therapy so she treat a clients with a art therapy so let's let's um, welcome her soon she, she might be anytime with us and we'll start our program with our kate so i guess she is here hello kate good morning how are you I'm good, thank you, Kate, and welcome to the Aero FM. Thank you, it's good to be here. Yes, Kate, and how, how is the weather in Wellington today? It's raining. Yeah, not the best, but it's not raining now, but it's for the rest of the day. Okay, that that's good, and the, the volume is a little bit down. Thank you, Kate, and then it's, it's really appreciated that we can... Uh, welcome you today in our program and this program is Tewa Fanu. Mm -hmm. Te Tewa Fanu is time for family and yeah. the pro as you also aware that the program is a gambling harm awareness program and yeah. it runs every fortnightly uh, and the repeated version is every Friday. So yep. And so, can you introduce yourself, Kit? It's better uh, introduction from your side to our counselors, uh, yep. to to our counselor, uh, to our audience uh, that um, you do case worker as a counseling service and uh, also art therapy. So it's good to uh, introduce from your side rather than me. Yeah. Well, um, in essence, I work for Salvation Army Oasis in Wellington. And I'm one of the um, gambling case workers. I've been working as a gambling case worker now for about a year and a half, two years. Um, and before that, I was a fully qualified art therapist. And I still use that in my work today in get relation to gambling. Um, maybe I'll dispel a few myths about what therapy, art therapy is to start with. Because I know um, it's not that common here, although it's known... Um, widely internationally in New Zealand it's still relatively new particularly in the field of addiction um, art therapy when you go into a session for art therapy I'm not providing an art class as it were I'm not a teacher mm -hmm. um, the person the client themselves will be the expert of their own work um, it's not just for kids or artists or people who can um, draw it's really open to anybody that struggles with communication um no artistic talent is um needed it, there's we don't 
look at the work for the artistic value of it. It's more about the expression that comes through from doing the work and the actual process of doing the work and the things that come up for the client. Um, in terms of art therapy, one of the benefits of it is that when we talk, um, we're actually only using um, 30% of the way we communicate. 70% of the way we communicate is nonverbal. And a lot of our experiences are not necessarily captured in words. And art offers an opportunity to communicate these thoughts and feelings in a relatively non-threatening manner, um, particularly for people with um, drug and alcohol addiction, which also includes um, gambling addiction. Often they find they use them as a means of pushing away feelings and a way of ignoring them, zoning out, as it were. Um, because they can't cope with how they're actually feeling inside and they don't quite understand it. Um, they just know that they're impulsive and they need it to fill a part of their life. Um, and because they don't understand it, uh, using art can be a way of helping them to find their voice. Um, you know, it can help enhance their problem-solving skills, um, learn to help them increase their self-esteem, their self-awareness, um, and also sometimes release the feelings that they've got inside, putting it down on paper, being able to reflect on it, um, and also get a sense of accomplishment sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes emotions can block mm -hmm. the way we communicate in words, um, whereas art's another way of understanding and coping with their gambling addiction or um, drug and alcohol addiction. There is a definite crossover between the three. Mm -hmm. um, as the saying goes, art can speak a thousand words. And often, often you have a limited amount of times with clients that you see them. So you want to make the most of each session, whereas art really kind of cuts to the crux of the matter often. And a lot of people find it um, a lot more in depth than they expect um you know it really does it can be quite an emotional thing but sometimes you need to go through that to come out the other end mm -hmm. so and it's done in a safe space so yeah so that's the sort of um thing i try to offer our clients mm -hmm. particularly those with gambling issues so kate uh, um um is for my understanding, uh, uh, thank you for sharing all, um, uh, all these things, uh, information regarding art therapy. Uh, yep. Are you saying it is an alternative option for the uh, efficient co communication or adding up for efficient communication with the client? Yeah, it's an alternative way of communicating. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, 70% of the way we communicate is nonverbal. And sometimes the reason find, people find themselves gambling is to zone out, not cope with the, um, their emotions and their feelings. Whereas art will give you a safe space in which to do that. Um, and sometimes it can be quite revelationary for a person to see what actually, when they see it down on a page, mm -hmm. um, how it actually translates onto the page and then often they can find the words get a better understanding of where they're they're at where they come from where they want to go just by looking at the artwork and reflecting back on it mm -hmm. so it's sort of twofold one is about expression one's about reflection nice mm, yes. but it's kind of a healthy and productive method of expressing yourself you know, and processing these difficult emotions many clients have. Mm -hmm. So the two points uh, you were using is it's uh, one is reflection, another is uh, um, yeah, just uh, uh, adding up to our audiences that they can get the good ideas. Uh, yeah, it's very much about finding a personal way of expressing yourself it, okay. um, through a healthy and sort of productive method of using art rather than having to go to alternative means of coping such as gambling, drug mm. and alcohol use. Um, yeah. So, and Kit, um, uh, do you, do, uh, what is the success rate of using art therapy in, um, yes, like is in addiction field where you are working? Um, yeah. Uh, well, art therapy essentially grew up alongside addiction treatment. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then into gambling. Um, more new gambling's more new in terms of art therapy and gambling, but the underlying issues tend to be very much the same. Um, I've worked now for a year and a half. I think I mentioned at um, Oasis in Wellington using art therapy, and I've done some evaluations with clients mm -hmm. during that time, mm -hmm. and it's been unanimously, overwhelmingly. Um, popular and I've had really good feedback about how it's made a difference. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes just visually seeing things can help people understand them better and understand them in a new way that which they won't necessarily through words. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, it's Kate said um, that uh, expression and reflection is the main part for art therapy to help the client and also so practically uh, mm -hmm. to the to the client, uh, what are the activities or yeah related to art th therapy are you yeah giving to uh, to the clients? Yeah, I use a whole range of materials and sometimes it just depends on the client and their preferences and what's going on with them at the time. I've got like paint, um, sculpting materials, um, drawing materials, like um, I've got simply as pencils or marker pens and then moving into like your oil pastels, um, soft pastels and paint. Um, you know, it depends where the person's at and how where they feel comfortable in drawing or painting. You know, people have a different preferences for different things. And sometimes what they're trying to get across will come across in paint, which won't necessarily come across in drawing. So really, you know, we listen to where they where they feel comfortable and where they want to start. And it can um, change over time. You know, once they feel more comfortable in the space and in doing the work, they may be more experimental, you know, trying out new things mm -hmm. um, that they never even considered before. Mm -hmm. uh, um, thank you, Kate. And also, what are what are the places or yeah um, parts uh, specific uh, um, yeah that therapy can be used well, like as in addiction or what are the other places that art therapy can be used oh there's a range of places i used yeah. to work in aged care for a while okay um yep using art therapy there i've also worked in um a studio gallery situation for um people with mental health issues and developmental disabilities i've also worked in inner city schools with children from the age of like five through to leaving school age mm -hmm. um to process things that again they can't um find the words for particularly when they're young mm -hmm. um but really it can be adapted to anybody i think the only thing, I think people come into it thinking you need artistic skill, and um, that's very much not the case. Okay, yeah. That's what, when it comes to art, I was also thinking in the same way. We need some yeah, yeah. artistic uh, skills, but uh, yeah. But uh, thank, thank you so much for clearing this one. And That's all right. Yeah. But, yeah, because it's not, we, I don't provide art classes. I don't teach them. Um, like various techniques and stuff sometimes it's relevant which i will but normally it's very much about the art and the um client being the owner of their artwork and um i don't know what another misconception is i do not know what people are thinking when i look at their artwork i can make educated guesses but it's really through talking to the client and working through the art seeing how they um address the situation see what comes up and often the client won't even know what's going to come mm -hmm. you know but it just um we can't i always say don't think about it too much just do it you know because i think that um generally helps those preconceived notions that they can't draw mm -hmm. so uh, so I, I like to ma mention this to our audience that so art therapy is not so not only for the who are good at artistic it's about reflection and expression that's right Kate. Yeah, and it's a way of processing um, difficult emotions in a nonverbal way. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. So, and you, as you mentioned to uh, me, 
uh, that you have been working in different places like SKR, children and art gallery. What is the difference between working in addiction, uh, addiction field and in HKR or children, um, yeah, um, for the students or the children? Yeah, I mean, you have to um, pay for it at different levels if you're dealing with children, mm -hmm. often with a huge degree of trauma and often abuse, mm -hmm. which is um, not necessarily different when you... They tend to be overlapping, all these things, mm -hmm. and certainly working in mental health, mental health and addiction often go hand in hand. Um, and in aged care, it was slightly different. It was more um, just sort of art as therapy rather than art in therapy which is there's a bit of a distinction there it's more about um in aged care letting them express themselves um seeing themselves particularly in i worked um in dementia care mm -hmm. yes. and you know they live um minute to minute in that you know their memory isn't good but you give them um art materials mm -hmm. and because that goes way back to childhood they can um access those emotions mm -hmm. um, and bring them into the present whereas they might not remember one day to the next but you've also got an artwork for them to look at again and again which will remind them you know and they can build on it each time and it just gives them a focus um, and a way of expressing themselves and they'll get um, good feedback as well generally from um, staff or their um, relatives and so they get a sense of accomplishment, a sense of achievement, which is really important. Mm -hmm. And Kitty, yeah, uh, just out of, yeah, we are talking more about addiction here, gambling addiction. But yeah. just out of the curiosity, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you just uh, you have just mentioned about dementia and art therapy. And mostly yeah. people in a dementia, they, yeah, you said uh, yeah, just, they just live in minutes and minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Does that uh, art therapy really reflects their past? Do they remember? It depends what sort of dementia they've got, mm -hmm. but it is a way of confirming their presence, if you know what I mean. That might sound a bit airy-fairy, but mm -hmm. um, I just found it really useful because they would then start talking mm -hmm. about stories and relating to each other, you know, sharing materials, getting conversation going that way, mm -hmm. when um, otherwise they can be quite isolated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for sharing that one. And um, what you used to do in uh, art gallery, and uh, is that art gallery and art therapy is um, somewhat uh, interlinked? Uh, I didn't get it. Um, no, they're slightly different. Um, the ones that I worked in for a gallery, um, mm -hmm. we would do, what, there's a thing called outsider art, which is for um, people that aren't formally educated. Um, in art mm -hmm. um i worked a lot of people with um mental health issues mm -hmm. that weren't capable of working at that time you know uh, hold down a proper job this was the way of um allowing them to express themselves how they feel mm -hmm. and if they want show people how they're feeling try to get a better give people a better understanding of who they are that they're valuable members of society and they're talented you know, I found so many people with mental health issues and addiction are really creative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and art art deals with the, the left side of the brain. The right side of the brain is very much about your intellect, your logical thinking, whereas art therapy is much more about expression, your creative mind. Mm -hmm. um, and often when people um, do... Um, get into addiction it's because they can't find a way of um communicating or understanding what they're going through um and um gambling drugs alcohol they all are a way of coping whereas art offers an alternative way that deals with that side of the brain the creative side um which is really i find just can have a huge impact on the client in, in a relatively small amount of time as well. Like in treatments these days, you don't get a lot of time, so you want to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. And Kit, um, 
Uh, is this art therapy is involved in all the addiction in New Zealand, uh, addiction services in New Zealand or? Um... Not, yeah, not in New Zealand. No, not at the moment. I trained, it is in some places hmm. and it's becoming um, bigger, but at the moment it's still a small fish in a big pond, as it were. Um, but I trained in the States and I worked in the States in addictions and nearly every rehabilitation center you have in the states will have some form of art therapy um, in the program and mm -hmm. it's seen as a very valuable and essential part of their treatment mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's quite um in the uk it's very commonly used and australia it's becoming more commonly used as well within drug alcohol and gambling treatment sure is the counseling uh, in the counseling service art therapy itself is it included in the counseling service in a um, usual way as you said yes yeah 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 I, I i did a master's in art therapy and that had a huge counseling component and the counseling is completely um part of the whole art therapy i mean it's therapy it's psychotherapy in a sense but just using um not just words but also words drawing, painting, you know, all the different ways you can have of expressing yourself. So it's quite a holistic way of working. Mm -hmm. So it's still, it's, it's uh, not uh, very popular in New Zealand, as you said. It's a, it's, well, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a new discipline in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think people are that well acquainted with it at the moment. Um, that's something you know, I'm trying to work on and mm -hmm. um, to get that understanding out there. It's not some sort of airy fairy um, discipline, mm -hmm. you know, some alternative medicine type thing. It's very much within the mainstream. It has potential to be within the mainstream mm -hmm. and is in other countries part of mainstream treatment for addiction. So, Kate, in future, are we expecting that uh, it it might come, or um, uh, it is probable chances it might come in a mainstream the art therapy in a addiction section or in any other? I language? hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. If we follow on from um, the examples of other countries mm -hmm. um, where it's been shown to be an enormous success, mm -hmm. and in my work that I've done through the evaluation forms, it's proven to be an enormous success. Um, so much so that sometimes I don't have enough time to be able to see all the people that would like to see me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. You know, it's um, at the moment demand outstrips the um, a my ability to provide it to mm. everybody, but as much as I can, I do. So, sure. Uh, Kate, um, are you, um, yes, one more um, question. So are, you, are you doing, uh, are, are you helping the clients uh, through art therapy? Is it in a individual way, individual basis, or is it in a uh, group basis? Yeah, I've done both in the past. I've done group work and individual work. Um, at my, at here in Oasis in Wellington, I do it all individually. Mm -hmm. I have done some small groups and I'm open to doing groups in the future. But at the moment, it's mainly on an individual one to one basis. So, is, yes, so does group, group art therapy will be more effective or individual art therapy will be more effective for the client? Um, it's different. It's like group therapy as opposed to individual therapy. They both have their places, you know, and they're both have different strengths and both have different weaknesses mm -hmm. and it's very much the same with art individual or group you know with groups you can share with other people and get their feedback as well mm -hmm. um, and their input whereas individually you're working more intensively with one person so they're both really productive ways of counseling mm -hmm. nice Yes, it's it's lots of uh, information from Kate uh, to our yeah, regarding art therapy to our audiences and definitely I like to tell our audience that you are in a program called Tewa Fano. 
the Tao of Anu is a program run by Salvation Army Oasis and we are helping or we are supporting for the people who are having problem gambling. So please do not hesitate to contact us if you are having problem gambling. We are based in 41 Perry Street, Masterton. And you can contact us through our 0800 number or through our Facebook page also. And we, we have here today a caseworker and also art therapist Kate uh, from Wellington. Uh, she works in Wellington uh, Oasis and it's, we are very lucky to have her here today. And yes, uh, it's for uh, Kate, yes, expression can be um, yeah, promoted through uh, art therapy also. It will be more effective and kit do you like to say anything you want to say at last uh, that you want to share with our audience yeah just if anyone um does feel they'd like to experience some art therapy um in relation to addictions or elsewhere there is um other art therapists out there with other specialisms mine is in addiction and if anyone wants to discuss it at all or learn more about it, they're free to contact me um, through your radio show. And I'll get back to them um, as soon as possible. Definitely, definitely. Our audience, if anyone needs help or anyone needs more information, they can contact Kate uh, through our radio show or you can contact me and I'll yeah uh, take you up to yeah uh, connect to uh, Kate uh, for knowing more information about art therapy. Do you have a group of art therapists like uh, Art Therapist Association or something like that, Kate? Yes, we do. We've got the New Zealand and Australian Art Therapy Association, um, which I'm a member of, a registered member. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the organisation that is the umbrella for art therapy. It it would be great if uh, they can promote it in a in a collaborative way. They can pro put to to the uh, yeah agencies policies or government government policies regarding uh, art therapy so needs to be included uh, in the addiction service or age care service, children care service or any other services that were as art therapy can be used so your yeah. voice might be very important in future to get yeah, it yeah i hope term. so yeah i'm trying to get the word out there thank you so much kit for uh, yeah for joining to us and it's really appreciated for your time and yep, no problem at definitely all. i'll see you when um, uh, i'll be in wellington and yes um, uh, i like to thank you from our audience's side also and Kate, have a beautiful uh, weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Okay, ciao. All Thank right. you. Thank you for being part All of right. it. Thank you. Bye. Thank All you, right. Kate. Bye. Bye. Here we go. We, we had a Kate from, um, from uh, the Salvation Army Oasis in Wellington. Uh, so, um, yeah, she had shared lots of um, important information to us. Uh, so, uh, today, uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, productive uh, information we got. And then I'm so happy to share this information regarding art therapy to our audience. Uh, thank you, audience. And I'll see you. Ne uh, you can hear my program next Friday again if, and if you want to know more about art therapy please do not uh, hesitate to contact me and uh, I'll connect you to the kit also and for other like it's gambling problem also please contact me uh, or contact our service uh, whichever uh, is easier for you and we are here to support you and we have a free counseling service too so thank you uh, to everyone and have a wonderful weekend and sorry i, I could, it was very interesting talk, talk that i couldn't play the songs today just, just the half an hour went just uh, yeah so quickly uh, definitely i'll come with uh, some beautiful songs in our next program so i hope you enjoyed this uh, art therapy talk with kate and uh, you got lots of information regarding it. So I'll come next fortnight with a program 
tewa fanu to our audience and till then please enjoy your weekend and please provide your time to fano instead of going to focus venues and wasting your money uh, live healthy and well and be with family uh, thank you so much and have a lovely weekend ciao bye FM 92.7 Access Radio Warapa, get in touch. Phone us on 378 0255. You don't need.